everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having an unbelievable start to your day. That's not what I wanted to do. Alright. Um, as for me, headed to the gym. Um, I want to take a little time on the way to to illuminate a couple of things. We've been talking about a lot of things that on the surface uh, seem celebrity-centered. You know, the obvious with Kanye and the what looks like intensifying uh, focus on Kyrie Irving, who to them have been a problem for a while, has been a problem for a while. Well, to, to me, those are surface conversations until you start looking at the motive behind it. Someone asked a question, um, and I'm going to leave the question with you, then I'm going to move on to what I want to talk about. And this is not a promo one way or another. I've really tried to stay off of either side of the argument, even though I have an opinion. Opinions aren't what drive things. Critical thought and facts uh, on which to focus critical thought are the things that go so I've remained, you know, you know, uh, unimpressive in the sense of impressing my opinion on what I think about Kanye and his moves and his ideas. Um, and it's probably because my opinion is un unimpressed, not that I don't see some things uh, that are factual and not that I don't see some things that are questionable. And I guess it is because of both of those things. But anyway, the person asked is, the question, if Kanye is as batshit crazy, I'm trying to get it as close to what he said, as batshit crazy as everybody is making him out to be, why are those in the positions of power going to such, such great lengths to quiet him? And it goes in the vein of the thing that I always say to you guys, elephants don't swat flies. Just keep that in mind. This isn't to talk about anything about nobody being a genius and everybody making 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 boss moves and none of that bull crap. Uh, I, I keep my opinion on that. Uh, some things are just left to be seen. Everybody thinks they know something, and the thing about it is, I'm not gonna pretend to know the moves that are going on. While I've had some exposure to uh, people with that kind of money. That's not my circle. That's not my vein. I haven't even come close to making it there. I've done extremely well uh, over the course of my life, but billionaire status is a whole nother game, and the way the game is played is a different level. The people that I've had exposures to um, have shown me that. Um, Mark Cuban, for one. Uh, different monster. Uh, and I'm not calling him a monster. I'm just saying the way they think, the way they move and how we see wealth and resources is a completely different way. Anyway, that's a whole other story. Look, think on, think on that. And the whole Kyrie thing is Kyrie has been a thorn in the side of the system simply because he's a black dude that won't get in line, dribble, and shut up. Uh, he not only doesn't do what they want him to do in the vein of what they pay him to do, he turns around and says whatever comes on his mind and what he believes and what he stands in. And while I don't always agree with some of the things he says, I, I agree with his right to say it and I agree with the strength of fortitude to stand on what he believes. And it, he's also, when been proven wrong, came back and apologized, says I was off, you know. Uh, he's finding himself. He's like a bunch of young people. When we first started discovering, man, it ain't what we thought it was. It's easy to go extremely to the other side because you are really like ticked off, frustrated, angry, and untrusting of what you know. So now you're way on the other side. Anything somebody tells you, you know, you're out there sucking it up and you, you got to find a way to do that. So that's that. Here's the thing, though, that takes this deeper and the reason I'm here. It's, it's, it's election season. We are about to have another election. On They've been voting, early vote voting for over a week now. But we're, gonna, we're about to have another election. A bunch of things are going on. Here's the thing that is a part of the political process that nobody ever pays attention to. It has a massive 
impact on the black community. The non, I mean, the uh, nonprofit industrial complex, where literally nonprofit organizations are being created and funded for the sake of ciphering money out of black movements. It's happened multiple times. It's being used to also fund uh, local political coups that put people in office that are willing to do what the uh, puppet masters want them to do. One of the most powerful ways that I've watched the extremely wealthy control policy without doing it on the general political level, what I mean is when they can't get the right people in office to create the laws or to remove the laws or to amend the laws, that, that that's one of the ways you, you lobby, you push. Here's another way. At the enforcement level, every law that's created has to be enforced uh, on a civil level and on a criminal level. When you're talking about on the criminal level, one of the most powerful ways that I've seen in the last eight to 10 years of controlling what happens even when a law is passed that you don't approve of, say a law that uh, applies criminality to certain poor business behaviors that are uh, predatory in impoverished areas. Let's just use that for an example. It's not just something you can sue for on a civil level. It's something that's considered criminal now in certain jurisdictions. Well, what you do is you put a billion dollars behind getting a person elected that understands that their entire political livelihood is owed to you and is controlled by you. And then you get them to say, we're not prosecuting that. When you become the DA, you determine within your office what things you're going to focus on, what things you're going to uh, prosecute, what things you're not going to prosecute. It's, it's that simple. And so you can literally have a policy. That's not something we're going to focus on. That's not something we're going to go after. Even though it's on the books as a law, we're not going on it. We're not going to focus on it. And you got a bunch of those in uh, the Midwest. Kim Gardner. Um, God, boy, I can't think of this guy's name. He got elected on the promise uh, that he was going to prosecute Darren Wilson, Wilson in uh, bail. Uh, Derek Bell. So he, he he's going to uh, prosecute Darren Wilson for the murder of Mike Brown. He has never even mentioned uh, Darren Wilson since being elected. And I can go on a few more in that area that aren't enforcing certain laws. And that's something that we have to realize. Another thing that happens with the uh, nonprofit industrial complex is no pay attention. I don't care what the optics say. And we get strung on by the optics a lot. The optics say they're, fun they're, they're funding this with a million, 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 so many millions of dollars. They put so many millions of dollars into this, so many million dollars. They gave a billion dollars to this. And you look at the optics, man, they're really trying. They're putting, let me tell you something. If you've got something you're funding, you're funneling millions of dollars in and it's getting worse, the program doesn't work. Now the optics look good because it says you're trying, but here's the problem. If you're talking about violence in the community, when you sit up and funnel millions of dollars in the programs, and there are definitely some that have been just sucking in millions of dollars, and they're saying we're pointing it at this particular problem, where well, you're talking about, let's say, African-American adolescent and young adult male violence. Okay, and then you look up and the violence increases. Then you sit up and say, man, we're putting all this money into it. And what it, what, what, what it does is it gives the image that it's an unfixable problem, that it's inherent that these kids are just going to be violent. It's nothing you can do about it. We're doing the best we can. We're pumping millions into it. But if the program doesn't work, if the program has uh, linchpins that are not fastened, if the program has gaps, if the program has certain elements and components that are vital to its success, but they're not connected, and you got to understand, the people know the research. They understand what needs to be and what doesn't. 
then you're not going to get success out of it. But if you look at a smaller level where people are actually working using programs that work, I'm one, uh, there are a bunch of them. Uh, but you're not going to see them get funding. They're not going to get funding. They're going to be ignored. They're not going to get funding. They're not going to get uh, anything close to it. Why? Because the program works. But what is happening is we are taught to focus on brand recognition. We are taught to, taught to focus on what's popular, what's big. So we see something with a name on it. We'll give in a heartbeat uh, to... Uh, I don't put this organization out of my head. They, they, they just wreak so much havoc in the community. But uh, some of the big ones, Red Cross. Um, I can't even think of the other one. Starts with an N. Uh, but we see those and automatically say they're good to give to. You know, they're a 5013C, you know. Uh, and so, you know, just give to them. But the problem, here's the problem. While they're government sanctioned, and they're only government sanctioned in the sense that they're recognized by the IRS as a nonprofit organization, and meaning that there's a tax break for giving to them. And that's one of the reasons why more wealthier people like giving to them because they see the financial benefit. It's a way to reduce tax liability. Here is, uh, and normally there's a way that money comes back, but that's a whole other story we're not going to get into today. Uh, the game is being played and we're not even in it. We're on the sidelines and we get kicked. Or we out there and we get kicked. We don't get to kick back uh, because we don't understand how things work. What I'm trying to get you to understand is a part of this political movement where the Dems are running games on us, the Republicans are pretty straightforward in how they're going to handle us. We know who they are. Uh, they pretty much play the same playbook for the last hundred or some years. That's what they've done. On the flip side, the Dems become whatever they think we want them to be. And they know how to shout racism uh, at the right moment. They know how to say the right catchphrases. But the other part of this is the funding mechanisms that are literally, literally siphoning resources out of things we need in our community. And black male violence is the only thing. Education is a problem. Res residential redevelopment, uh, business development, uh, community empowerment and improvement, uh, reducing the uh, black male dropout rate, which would automatically reduce the incarceration rate. They're both linked. Uh, a, a black male is five times more likely to become incarcerated if they don't complete their high school education. Uh, reducing the recidivism rate for those do, who do become incarcerated. These are all programs that are out there that, that work when they're done right but aren't being funded. And there are other programs out there where they're telling you they're doing the best they can, but the problem is worsening. Anytime you say you're pumping millions of dollars into something and it's getting worse, you need to really sit down and look at the structure. And you need to look at what's being done. And that's the question we need to start asking ourselves. We need to start asking ourselves, we've been doing this for X amount of years, has it worked? And if it hasn't worked, we have to sit up and say, okay, that's gotta be something different that we need to do because it's not working. I'm going to leave it on that. I'm going to get my behind in this gym and work out. But when it's not working, we've got to do something different. And we're not doing that. Um, again, I've been pushing for support for the work we do in the community. We're one on. We are one of only a few uh, think tanks in this country that are literally focusing significant amount of resources on discovering and deciphering and creating solutions for the enigmatic problems in the black community. Been doing it for years. Uh, Dr. Uh, Anderson's Harvest Institute is another. We are putting in work, serious work. Uh, we are uh, offering wraparound services. We have a research institute that I head that has produced volumes of empirical data that gives an understanding to the black enigma, which has led to the programs that I have designed that we know work. Why? Because we've proven they worked and they work in every situation in every uh, study that we've uh, applied. They worked and then we've put them to practical use and they work. The problem is you're not going to get funding for them because what? They work. We need to learn how the game is being played. And until we learn how the game is being played, we'll keep being played. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here and get in the gym before everybody and their mom shows up. Uh, on that note, I'm out.